This lesson is about techniques used to read from and write to files. Java provides some classes for doing these things. Here is a program that I showed you in a previous lesson. This program accepts the name of a file on the command line and copies that file to another named copyfile.duplicate. I showed you this one earlier when I was explaining exceptions and now I want to take a closer look at the file utilities. The first thing that happens is that a file object is created from the two file names. Now because this is a copy program, the input file should exist and the output file may or may not exist. This program doesn't check, but you could include tests here for that. Here is the documentation for the file class. Here are some static fields defined as part of the class. These hold the correct characters that you can use to build path names for the current operating system. For example, there will be regular slashes for a Unix system and backslashes for a Windows system. If you use these constants to build your path names, your program will be portable across any operating system. But the real value of the file class is in its methods. You have methods here that you can use to find out anything you want to know about the file. As you can see, you can even create and delete the file from here without ever opening it. And you can see that a lot of the methods in here have to do with the file's path name. Many of the queries about the file start with the word is. You can tell whether it's a normal file, whether it's a directory, whether it's hidden. You can determine its length, change its name, change its permission, and just about anything else you'd like to do to it. To read the input file, a new file reader object is created. When you create an object of this class, it opens the file for input. It's a convenience class in that it assumes certain things about the file. It assumes that the standard input buffer size will work and that the input file is formed of characters or bytes in the proper format for reading this way. Notice that it's a subclass of the input stream reader and we'll be looking at streams in the next lesson. The companion class of the file reader is the file writer. Here again, it assumes things about the file as to the size of the buffering and the type of data that will be written. The file reader and file writer classes are quite useful and will work in most cases. You will need to use something else only if you have a specially formatted file. You can use the read method of the file reader to input one character at a time. Now a character is a 16-bit Unicode character and this method returns a 32-bit int value. That's because of the test for the end of file. As you know, Unicode values are all positive and all possible Unicode values are valid characters. A negative value is returned at the end of the file so it's necessary to get the input as an int so you can test for that negative value. The write method of a file writer requires a 16-bit care value, so this program has to cast the input value so it can be output. Now the files were opened when the file reader and file writer objects were created, so they must be closed here. This closing is important, especially for the file writer, because characters could be held in the output buffer and not yet written to the file. This closing will flush the buffers to the file. The file reader and file writer read and write one character at a time. Things can be made a little more efficient by adding buffering and reading and writing entire lines. This is the same program except buffering has been added. Here you see that the same file reader object was created and then it was used in the constructor of the buffered reader class. The same file will be input, but the buffered reader will transfer the input characters into the buffer so your program can read entire lines of input. In the same way, the output is buffered so it gathers up output characters until the buffer is full, then outputs the whole thing as a block to the file. If you're working with large files or a lot of files, this can be quite a savings. 
The input is read one line at a time, so this program will only work for a text file. The Boolean expression at the top of the loop checks for the existence of an input string. The output requires that you name the string, the offset from the beginning of the string, and the number of characters to write from the string. This program wants to write the whole string, so the offset is set to zero, and the character count is the entire string. Now, the input new line characters did not come in as part of the string, so it has to be added with a call to the new line method on the output. A call to the close methods of the buffered read and write closes the whole chain. The underlying file streams are also closed by these calls. Closing flushes the buffers, which completes the output file, and then shuts everything down. The only way to open the files again is to create new objects. One more. This is the same program with something new added. Appended to the buffered write is a print writer. The print writer class has better methods for writing lines of text. Here you can see the print line method being called. This method outputs a string of text and then adds the new line to the end of it for you. Oh, by the way, the new line character added to the end of each line is whatever is correct for the operating system. On the Unix system, it just adds a carriage return. On Windows, it adds a carriage return and a line feed.